position is impossible. Because millionaires are built on economic climate and economic fall. Right now, millionaires are being made. That's right. Amen. Because you're in an exponential curve. Yes. Amen. And you got to find out where you are in the curve so you can start focusing your purpose towards the plan of God and the mind of God in the sea. But the first thing you got to do, you got to heal your mind. Your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind will affect your mouth. Because when your mouth is crooked, it's a sign that your heart is crooked. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you got to understand, as a man of God, you just can't be saying anything. As a man of God, you just can't be saying anything. You got to talk positive, speak positive, and believe the impossible. No, but we want to stay churchy. <coughs> no, this is full of the prophets. My job is to bring you to the point where you can write me a $100,000 check and we can build a church. A daycare. My job is to bring you to the place where you own the place right. you're working in. That's right, that's right, that's right. My job is to preach to you to the place where your music becomes dollar bills. My job is to make sure that you start off with a job, but you end up owning the job you work in. And a person in here labor. Right now, if I make $80,000 a year, I will never own the house I'm in. Your job wasn't meant to own your home. Say healing. healing. So this word infirmity means disease. That word disease means dis ease. You've been dissed by life. But the Bible says, watch this, the Bible says that we are snared by the words of our mouth. We are taken. It's what we say. And watch this, I told you last week. The universe don't care what you say. Whatever you say, the universe is going to manifest. If you got pregnant and you was talking ignorant while you was pregnant, your children are going to come out manifesting what you were saying when you were pregnant. If you was pregnant, you say, I don't want this child. Husband going around. Boyfriend going around. I don't want this child. I don't know if I want this child. Then that child comes out with a weakness, a deficiency. In all your life, you'll be struggling with that child. But it's you that caused the snare. Oh, you don't hear me in here. See, everything is a spirit. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, that child he raised. You don't believe that. You want people to pat you on the back, tell you you're doing well. No, no. You're not doing well. you got to change how you say it. Listen to the Greek word. This is the Greek word for infirmity. Listen to how they did it. They said that the word infirmity means to be diseased. And watch this. Diseased with the ED. Then it says to be sick. To be sickly. Listen to the next level. Sickness. See, being sick is one level. You're just sick. Oh, okay, I've got to go. Sickly. I went from a cold to the flu. Sickness. I went from a cold to the flu to pneumonia. Pneumonia, kid. So now you got to figure out what God said about sickness. If God can cure, then watch it. Here's another level. The first level 
level is dis-ease. The second level is sick, sickness and sickness. The third level is weak. Watch this now. Weakened. Weaker. Weakness. Those are three dimensions that we walk in in life. We're diseased, we're sick, and we're weak. How are we going to deal with all this? That's why you got to put your face and put your life in God's hand. Amen. You can't put your life in God's hand if you don't put your hand in prayer. Amen. I, I ain't talking for my help. My job is to release this anointing, this part, apostolic anointing, this prophetic anointing into your life. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I receive the invitation. Lord, I receive the invitation. Say, Lord, don't let me leave this place without an impartation that will jump start me, that will push me into my destiny. See, that's the difference between church and school of the prophets. Because church have you hyped. All emotional. And so you come to a service excited, but your mind don't change because you got into the organ, and the choir, and all that junk. That ain't going to save you, baby. It ain't going to save you. It shouldn't take 20 songs, a B selection, a C selection, a D selection, an A selection, for you to get saved. We ain't doing all that foolishness in here. Because watch what happens. The Holy Spirit start moving, and then you break it. Okay, give me a B selection. The Holy Spirit is moving. The people of God is worshiping. And then you say, well, we got an announcement. You done broke the spirit realm. So now you put somebody, you put the praise team up, and she's just worshiping and praising, sweating, and the people are back in the spirit realm again. And now we got to take a, we, we got a Sunday morning program. All of that stuff breaks the spirit, and what happens is every time there's a break in the spirit, there's a weakening in the length of the anointing. Because when we come together corporately, you see what happened when we start praying corporately? You see how that anointing went up? Because what I did, I got you to release your anointing, so now your anointing partakes of her anointing, her anointing partakes of your anointing. Now, how can two walk together unless they... So now you're in agreement, you're in prayer. Now you got to believe that you see the manifestation of your prayer. How can two walk together unless they agree? First of all, you got to agree with God. I don't care who you agree with. If you don't agree with God, it ain't going to happen. You've got to agree with God as a child of God. You've got to be under the blood. So if God said he can heal your infirmity, if God said he can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask, hope, faith, or desire, God can do it. The scriptures. I, I'm taking my time and saying, like 